slide I'm talking to you about wayfinding, about uh, traveling, about getting lost in spaces. And this is me, that one, <laughs> in behind on the site in India uh, in the museum. Well, for the first time getting here, India was a journey, but getting here was also a journey. I, I think most of you, when you start going somewhere, you start uh, browsing at the internet, where is something, well, then you see this. And then you come here for real, in the real world, and then you see this. Well, I think a lot of you come from Utrecht, <coughs> so you know the Oude Gracht. But then where is 230A? <laughs> <laughs> you are start looking at numbers, and you see 230, and it says something in the ruimte, walking around the tree. I didn't read it the first time, but I recognized it. But I know it's on the web, so I have to go downstairs, and I see a nice little sign pointing downstairs, okay, then I see this, <laughs> do I really have to go there? <laughs> and I see this, and now it's even worse because it has been raining, the green has flowered, and I think, do I really have to go? And then you find it. Well, this is about wayfinding. Maybe you think wayfinding is about science, but most of it is about environment. When you have to go down the stairs, push past this little green tree thing, then you start to hesitate, and then you need some extra things to go there. That's wayfinding. As soon as you leave home, you're a traveler. Maybe you go to your work. I work in Amsterdam, so that's commuting. That's pretty comfortable. But when you are going traveling, or for me going to India, it's going farther away from home, you need more extra, it's more uh, exciting. But what if you don't have information and you're left alone there? It's a bit uncomfortable. It's also, traveling is exciting, but it can also be, well, give a lot of stress. Well, our job, and Max and I, is about helping you, helping the travelers, helping people getting from A to B in a comfortable and pleasant way giving the right information at the right time. And that is a lot about your, the work we do, about your left brain, it's analytical, it's thinking about, it's psychological, it's economics. And what we make for you is pretty invisible. Our design is not visible. If it works, you don't see it, you don't notice it. And that has to do with your left brain, because what we want is that you find your way intuitively. That you can just go down the stairs, push past this green thing and then enter. That's what we try to do. For me, my name is Atje. I'm uh, a designer, a senior designer and project manager at uh, Max and I. For me, wayfinding and traveling is commuting to Amsterdam. <coughs> and what if a train is broken? Where, is there another train? How, how, how do I get there? Or these are little sketches from my diary during uh, my hikes with a big backpack. And you can see that, I, I'm going to use this little pointer if it works. Oh, it doesn't work. Are we here? I miss the sign in the middle at night in the city looking at the map. Where the hell is our hotel? Maybe recognizable. For me, it's also uh, racing to get an aeroplane. And this is at Fiumicino Airport. But look closely at the signs, it became uh, an assignment later. You see four arrows, <laughs> and one to, but there are three lanes. <laughs> <laughs> and here is a lot of information about parking. Well, I, I just want to get to the terminal. And so what we did, 
this proposed a different design, and that is get rid of all this parking shizzle because I don't need this right now. I want to go to the right terminal. And we ordered the information with three lanes and one going to the right. That's stressful going to the airport and you're a bit late and you have to hurry to get your plane. Also stressful in an airport. Your luggage. I don't know how many of you experienced this, but sometimes, I, I, it happened to me three or four times, my luggage was lost. And this is from a little uh, gouden boekje, golden booklet. That was uh, for Schiphol, it's a hundred years, so they have this story about a little girl who lost her little suitcase. And this brings me on Schiphol. We work a lot for Schiphol Airport. I think a lot of you flew from there. Yes? Well, if you could find your gate easily, thanks to us, <laughs> if you get lost, also partly. <laughs> so it all started out with uh, Bengo Wissing, this is the original design, yellow, and in 1939, Paul Maxner was asked to make a better design, because Schiphol expands, 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 and you need an extra design, and what you can see what is really different here, is that we added pictograms, Multilingual, you can see an image and it's more easy to find your way. Um, we add color, so you can see yellow springs in your eye and you can just rush to the gate. Or when you're more relaxed and you have to buy a coffee or go to the toilet, green. Shifting the, inf the information. And we didn't use three arrows, but we combined them. Then there was a big fire in Düsseldorf in 1969. And then we decided to make a really color-coded system, as we call it, and we reserved the green, because green is for emergency exits. So we reserved the green, and you can see it here. Am I still understandable? You can hear me? Okay, then I keep on doing without the mic. The green is now reserved for the emergency exit. We kept the yellow, because it really springs in your, to your face uh, for traveling. And then we have the blue for retail and catering and the dark grey for uh, other facilities. The toilets, for instance, are also dark grey. This color-coded system. The same principle of thinking in sp splitting up information with colors we did in JFK in New York. Only this, what you're looking at right now, isn't really JFK. Steven Spielberg, with the film The Terminal, and well, he's really uh, uh, wants to do things right, so he asked us to make the set dressing. <laughs> and this is real J JFK terminal in New York. So wayfinding is about bringing visitors from A to B. And in case of traveling and hospitals, it's important that people get the shortest and the fastest route to from A to B because you're stressed, you, you have really the purpose. I work a lot in the cultural sector or leisure. And then you may wonder, uh, it, it isn't really that important that you get there on time. You are more relaxed, so but you still want to find the toilet. You still want to find the exit. So that's wandering without getting lost. And there are psychological models for this. Uh, the first one, really getting from A to B, that's a psychological model, and they call it a route strategy. So people follow, for instance, sign from that sign to that sign to that sign, and oh, I'm there. The second one is a survey strategy. Then you. But what you need, it's more flexible, because you can here go from, uh, uh, you can choose this route or below the route to be, but it's more flexible, but you need a little bit understanding of your surroundings. If you don't have these understandings, it doesn't work. So you have a certain mental map of your environment, and it's difficult to have a mental map and especially to draw one. Because this, we had a workshop and we asked people to draw their country and the city they live in. Well, which country is this? Germany. 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 And then this little shape here. <laughs> Ber Berlin or something. East West uh, Germany. Well, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> oh. So it's the Netherlands, and this shows how difficult it is sometimes for people to draw. And I suppose a lot of you are designers, or at least your visual people, try to, when you're at home, 
try to draw the logo of NS by heart. It's also, it looks very simple, but it is difficult. <laughs> so this is about mental math and having a feeling about space and where you are. And we work a lot with architects and they are, well, they are people who really have special knowledge because therefore they are architects. And they can't imagine how difficult it is sometimes, how, how you can orient yourself in a building. They say, I hear often, well, it's obvious, isn't it? Well, it isn't. And the building, like I started with my talk, the surroundings, the vicinity, that's the most important thing. People don't want to go into dark places. They want, don't want to go down. So the building is the most important. And that we call natural wayfinding. When the building says, oh, here, yeah, this is the entrance. You're welcome. And there's light. Well, I walk to the light. I walk to a broad corridor, not to the small dark places. So when you can do something with architecture, it's far more important than science. In old cities, for instance, uh, you can orient yourself very easily. It's Poland, Krakow, because a lot of cities, like Utrecht, they have a church. Here, we have the Autograch, they have also a river, city wall, modern city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Could be anywhere. Well, um, <coughs> Buildings. Where is the entrance? Well, this is from the highway in Antwerp, the city. And they have an entrance like this. Well, this looks like an entrance, entrance, doesn't it? It's a canopy and it really, with a banner, it says, well, you're welcome. But then, this was under construction. This also looks a little bit like an entrance, I think, because it, it's like, welcome. And here's a Grand Café. So in the evening there's light there, but this is actually an emergency exit. <laughs> <laughs> it was originally an emergency exit, but since it's so in your face and leading to the Grand Café, they use it really now as a, as a real entrance. And this is a, for the wayfinding project we did there, uh, we made a drawing of the building, emphasizing both entrances. So. Natural wayfinding, finding the wayfinding entrance starts with the building. Well, this is obvious, I think. Symmetrical building. Here we have a high elevation, light, red carpet leading to the entrance. You, you would go in there. It works from here. But this, then you got confused because the building and this light says, come, enter, it's here. But the red carpet is there, so that's what you can do. There's no sign here. It's only the building, the architecture, and the landscaping. And when we do this, it's more obvious. So this is also part of our work, not the signs, but sitting together with architects. This is Rosette in Arnhem. It's a building while well, they're up, running up for the 30 best buildings of the world. world. But when you enter there, there's a huge staircase. It invites you going up to the library, to classrooms upstairs. So it invites you to get up. When you are not that mobile, you have to go in there. And therefore, you need us. Therefore, you need a sign to tell people who are less able, you can go up by elevator. This is not a moment we work for St. Petersburg, the Hermitage, Hermitage. It's also a stair. Well, it, it, the carpet says, come up, I invite you, but it's a little bit impressive, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. And when you come up, this natural wayfinding, what I would do is go straight on, because it's light, the doors are wide open, but what they want you to do, start either here or there, because there the exhibition starts. So what we uh, invented for them is this overview, an index, with, I didn't know if you noticed, but it's moving a little bit. And when something is moving in this pristine, huge environment, your eye catches it, and then you see, hey, there's moving something. Oh. Mm -hmm. So there, the natural way finding the building invites you to go straight on. But then with our additional things, the signs, we can help people to find their way around. 
another one about stairs. People don't want to. This is um, a shopping mall in Asia, in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. And when Studio first uh, designed this floor plan, you, you see our work has a lot to do with architecture, etc. And then this is huge uh, vide with uh, an escalator. Yes, escalator. And here are the elevators. But people don't want an escalator or an elevator. You don't want to make that choice. You want to go up or down. So what we did together with them is design a new floor plan where the escalator and the elevator are together. So people see it immediately. You don't need signs to tell people, oh, you can go to the elevator. It's all together. And in the end, it looks like this. It's a bit of rendering. And this is a picture from the elevators from below. Sometimes that doesn't work out, and that's partly broken, how to uh, deal with your clients. Because they, also with you in the studio, they made this rendering, looks very good. And then later in the process, um, it was more handy to flip the escalators. But the client says, no, I saw this rendering and it was perfect, I want it this way. So, Later in the process, we had different, a different perspective on the work, but that's about the client. The client, who is also his voice, and his, uh, I hear people laughing, can't you do something with? And then they want the color. They always ask for color with us. And in case of JFK, it works, because in Schiphol, I showed you, it's a color-coded system. In JFK, it's all gray, uh, glass, marble, stuff, natural color, so the yellow pops out. <laughs> this is real outside, at the Rotterdam <laughs> Central Station. Yeah. And normally you say yellow pops out, pops out, <laughs> we do not know point it out. This is Central Station. <laughs> so thanks to Free Record Shop, uh, it, it, it isn't there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the ingenious person who thought, well, let's make this yellow, you, you don't see the sign, so you can ask for color, but you always have to think about, can I apply color here? The next one is, in our job, oh, can't you do something with pictograms? Because I heard people who can't read, they can read images. We need pictograms. Well, this is from Hablamos Juntos, and they try to develop a set of pictograms for healthcare. Well, I zoom in on three of them. Any inkling what this means? <laughs> so I thought myself, this is a microscope and some test tubes, so lab laboratory or something. But then, what's this thing with a petri dish or something? But there's also a petri dish, so they're, they're kind of bit something. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, this is something. Oh, I <laughs> this um, and I think this on science laboratory pathology and oncology and I doubt oncology when everybody understands what it means. So you have an image that's unclear and a terminology that is not really clear. So what we do, uh, we also work for uh, NS, the railway stations. We also make pictograms and we are a little bit about redundancy. It's about giving an extra layer of information. So if you don't understand the sign, we put it in small letters on top of it. That's how we sometimes use pictograms. Another question, especially from healthcare, we uh, use hospitals. Can't you do something without numbers? Because by numbers it's not we are busy with a healthy environment and making everything nice for and less stressful for patients and then they get these numbers and it's really awkward, we don't want it. And then a hospital in Dordrecht invented this one and they thought, well, for people who cannot read well or don't want them, less, well, they, they, they want, wanted to use images. And then they thought, well, we are a hospital in Dordrecht so we use images from Dordrecht. That's nice, local touch. But they used the Grote Kerk. 
It's very near that hospital. <laughs> so it says here, the Grote Kerk, begane grond. People got an invitation that says you have to go to the Grote Kerk. There were not that many people, but there were people going to the Grote Kerk. <laughs> so what we did in the Meander Hospital, we did apply numbers, for instance, like an etage. You need obviously a number. But what we also did is, uh, this hospital is a huge hospital. You have a central axis, a central lane, we call it lane. And then at the right hand side, roughly, are the uh, building parts that are for the daily care. Well, they gave, we gave them, together with the hospital, names. <coughs> like street names, then the hospital becomes a kind of village, lane. And then at the left hand side there are the more long term uh, building parts where you have, well, when you're really ill and have to stay there for one or more days. So there we used a mix of uh, names and just building letters mm -hmm. and signs. And what we did for Schiphol, you park your car there, you go to a holiday, or for a two-day trip, you come back and you say, oh, what the heck, my car, where is it? You can remember row number 210 at parking P1, but we did a test there, and a lot of people, when you ask them, we, we, we interviewed people, it was even on the clockhouse, the children's program, and then we asked, where did you park your car? And most of the people say, at the seagull, or at the windmill, or at a sport. So here we also use images, but this image has nothing to do with Schiphol. Like Dordrecht, the Grote Kerk, really is there. <laughs> <laughs> but here we use abstract images that has to do something with the Netherlands, but not with Schiphol. So you can easily say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I parked at seagull. I've talked about the architect, about the client, but it is, in the end, about the user, the, the traveler, the one who is visiting the building, and he says, well, help me, and help me now, because we're not used to waiting anymore. This is Schiphol, in the old days, it's a, it's a dynamic system. <laughs> <laughs> because this guy is scribbling. But now we have other dynamic systems. Uh, for instance, the AMC hospital in Amsterdam, we got an indoor app. Does it work? Well, I think it's not foolproof because they show images. This is from a museum in uh, London, but they show images. But is the image the same in the app as in the real world? Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of people walking around, maybe there's a huge hospital bed standing there. You don't recognize it. But does, and does the app know where I am? I'm walking around, can it follow me? Technology is not really foolproof yet. I don't have a smartphone, so I can't rely on an app if I don't have a smartphone, so you have extra, need extra information. Or there are people who say, well, I, I'm not going to use my smartphone to find my way, it's in my bag, uh, hello. And more important, I can't use my smart smartphone because I need both my hands. Maybe in the hospital, but also traveling, I have my uh, little, uh, what, what is it, suitcase? and a child, and I have to find out uh, how am I going to do it. So it's not foolproof smartphones, and, and you have to download it. Museums uh, uh, say, oh, we have an app for you, but you have to download your app, and then your, your, your device is full with other shit, so it doesn't work. <laughs> what I want, especially when I'm stressed, I want him. I want a personal assistant. And this is in London, I was a little bit lost, looking for my hotel, and I met <coughs> him. He's a cabbie, and he's learning, they call it really the knowledge. They study three or four years to get whole London into their heads, so that people like me. He said, oh, can I help you, man? Yes, you can. I'm looking for that and that hotel. Oh, I know, it's just, just so-and-so around the corner, and if you like a good coffee, I suggest this route because you are passing an excellent coffee bar. Personal assistant. <laughs> 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 and this is then something more advanced than this clip because I can ask directions, it answers me, and I can talk to her or him. 
And this is from a museum uh, example. Uh, looking at this, I think it's the Rijksmuseum. That you can ask, and this is more about storytelling and what can you tell people, going from A to B in a hospital, that's getting there the fastest way. But when you're visiting a museum, you're more relaxed and you need other types of information and there, this kind of things can help that your device can tell you and suggest things for you. I thought this was uh, nice to show because there's an early version of the iWatch and in Bureau there are three people walking around now with these uh, devices, uh, constantly testing. We also have, uh, do I have time? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because now I'm, uh, uh, at the office we have uh, a bicycle that's also telling you the way. You have to lo download an app on your smartphone and then in the steering wheel there are lights and then you uh, set out the route and then, at your, I forgot the name, uh, and in your steering wheel the, the lights tell you whether you have to go to the left or to the right. I don't believe in that because then I have an extra thing, the bike. I would like to have it on my arm watch and then with little beeps or buzz things. Hmm? We need two watches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, one for one beep or one beep. <laughs> but then, then it's mine, it's on my body. And that's the next level, I think. This is the holo lens that you could put on your head. It was on, uh, if, if you didn't see it on the internet, it was uh, also at the Wereld Draai Door, in, uh, they showed it. Not this, uh, this guy. But then you have the world over there, and everything. So that's, it's going to be wearable. So, our basic needs, I started with uh, the natural wayfinding, it's about your surroundings and about the building, and that's really physical, and you know probably the pyramid of Maslow that says what you really need to survive, well it starts with physical needs, food, drink, sex, safety, love and belonging, esteem, and then you got really to your self-actualization. That's the old pyramid of Maslow, and some people say, well, it shifts for the generations and the new generation. <laughs> <laughs> because it's as, and this is for the Western world, in, in our happy-go-lucky, the Netherlands, uh, <laughs> for my niece, who should attend but isn't here, yeah. physical needs, well, they, they are there. She doesn't have to care about it because they are there. They, they, are, they are obviously there. And safety also. Well, well she can worry about uh, uh, passing an exam or something, but and, and she has a roof over her head, and she has wonderful parents who care for her and provide for her. So it, it starts for her almost here. So the, the Wi-Fi is there. Another thing that's more, oh yeah, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you, and it's also in New York, the old phone booths, they're transforming them to Wi-Fi stations because that really is the basic need. You, you don't want to get offline. And the other one is power. I don't know how many of you traveled around and you forgot that in, for instance, in India, there's this one. And I have a colleague who's very handy, and he found out that with the paper clip and stuff, he could also use this one. But we always need power because then we are offline and uh, we don't can find our way, but we can't find anything. So traveling now, back to travel, it's um, the natural wayfinding and the digital wayfinding, the digital information. This is a situation. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but I draw it and I'll tell you. I was uh, traveling, uh, well, by train to uh, to somewhere, and then I saw two people. The one one person really is a di digibate. He, he doesn't know anything about smartphone, etc. They are still here in this room, and he is looking at the yellow signs, which platform he has to choose, and he found I have to choose platform seven. But then he heard, oh, the train is leaving in five minutes from platform eight. Well, the hell in Utrecht with all these things going on. It's the wrong platform. So he navigates and travels just by reading the signs and hearing the things. But he ended up in a train 
sitting, and there there was someone who is, is walking around like this. Business person sitting in the coupe, opening the laptop, blah, 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 free wifi in the train, and then he said, holy shit, this is not my train. <laughs> so this, uh, person in the real world is picking up information there, and the digital person who discovers something in the train. I end with a small... Oh, the music is off. Well, it doesn't matter, you can look at it. <laughs> so again, quick thanks to both our sponsors.